Hello, this is the 13th Kiwi Crash Course video. As I said the last couple of times, I thought this time I'd finally get around to talking about how to use Kiwi's settings panels. That is, Kiwi has a built-in ability to create a settings panel with whatever config options you like, to automatically save these details in a file, and to load them when your app starts. It uses a slightly modified version of the standard Python config parser, so if you've done configuration this way before you recognise much of what's going on, though I'll start from the basics, you don't need to know anything to follow along with the video. The process to make your settings panel isn't very complicated, but there are a few different steps, and I'm going to walk through adding a simple example panel showing most of the functionality you can include if you want to. I've put this example program to start with, totally standard as normal with just a couple of imports and an app, though this time we're using a full app class rather than the run touch app helper function, because we need to use the app to interact with the settings panel. So to actually create a settings panel, I guess first I can show you what the app does so far. All it is is a big button that says open the settings and doesn't even do anything if I click it. To tell the button how to open that settings panel, we can tell it on release app.opensettings. That's app.opensettings is the standard way to open the panel. It will construct it if it doesn't exist and then display it in the window. If I haven't said before, in Kiwi language, the keyword app always refers to the currently running app, in this case, the settings app which is obviously useful when we want to do things like this. So let's run the program again. Now when I click the button, it opens the panel. We see by default Kiwi's own settings panel with different things, full screen, uh, whether to show the mouse cursor and so on, that you can toggle if you want. And if we added our own panel, we'll be able to switch to it with this spinner at the top. It would appear in this list. Of course, you can have different look and feels for your settings panel if you want. Just to show you an example, you do from kiwi.ux.settings import setting with sidebar and if you wanted to change this you would do self.settings class equals settings with sidebar there are a few different ones of these available in this case it just changes that spinner at the top to a sidebar at the side and our own panels would appear in a list here if we uh, added them you can experiment this with this if you want to the different layouts can be useful for different kinds of systems different kinds of screen shape and so on but anyway, all that shows though is Kiwi's own settings panel, and we want to add our own settings to change whatever things we want in our own applications. To do that, first of all we need to tell Kiwi's own config parser what settings to actually check for in the file, and what default values these settings should have. So we can do def build config, self config. And the syntax here is that this method is called to initialize the config parser. That is, we should use it to set the default values of any settings we want. The syntax is simple, config.set default. Now the syntax is first of all you need a section of the config file, I'll call mine example. That's just the format of this configuration is that every everything is divided into sections. And each section has a set of key value pairs. We can simply represent that with a dictionary. And I'm going to add one type, uh, one setting for each of the basic things that Kiwi currently lets you, uh, currently has a widget for choosing. In this case, a Boolean example. Boolean example, default is true, I guess. A numeric example default to 10, a options example which now default to option 2. We'll see how to set the different options later. A string example defaulting to sum string, and a path example defaulting to sum path. Seems to be everything. Now that tells the config parser what to look for, uh, what, op, uh, what sections there are in the file what the keys are and what the default values are. Now we need to tell Kiwi itself how to display that in a settings panel, so we do def build settings. Similar to before, this time instead of getting a config parser, we get settings, which is the actual settings widget. And the syntax to add a settings panel is settings.addjson panel. It has a name, panel name. It has a config parser. Self.config is the default config parser that we set the defaults for above, so we can just pass that in. And we need to pass it in some data. That could be a file name leading to some uh, lead, uh, leading to a file that contains this setting data, uh, not the setting data itself, but the data describing what the panel should look like. Or in our case, we'll see. I'm just going to use data, which is a string containing JSON formatted data describing how to lay out the settings panel. If the JSON doesn't mean anything to you, don't worry about it. We'll see in a moment. Now, the syntax here is what's really going on is data has to be a list of Python dictionaries describing what the panel should look like. I've made an example already. 
So ignore an adjacent part for now. It's a list of dictionaries, each of which is going to be an entry in the panel. So in this case, at the top, there's a title with the text example title. And then for each of the settings whose defaults I set, the bool example, numeric example, and so on, there's an entry again. In this case, type bool means the widget to describe it should be a Boolean widget letting you toggle a Boolean. Title and description were seen a moment how that's displayed, but I've just given them obvious names. And then it has to relate to something in the config parser. In this case, the section example is because we set the default to the example section, and you have to match that up. Obviously, you can have more than one section if you want. And the key bool example relates to one of these keys whose defaults we set. Obviously, again, you just have to match the strings up. I've added one of these for each of the things I already set, a bool, a numeric setting, an option setting. In this case, with the extra set of uh, options, option one, option two, and option three, describing what options are actually available, which will affect what the widget displays when the user is choosing things. And then a string and a path. You can note that these three different types of setting all are stored as strings, but the important thing is they're different types because Kiva will give you different widgets for choosing them, relating to what they actually contain. With that done, we can import the string I've used from settings JSON, import settings JSON. And the only important thing here is you don't have to do things exactly this way, but I've used the JSON module to take my list of Python dictionaries and use json.dumpS dump string to turn it into a string that build settings will understand. Even without understanding any of the background, this is all you have to do to do things yourself. Just copy this method, turn it into a string, and now that I've imported it, I can pass it in as the data for the config uh, widget setting JSON. And that should be everything we need to do. We can run the program again, open the settings panel, and this time we've still got the sidebar, it still has the Kiwi settings, but now it also has our own panel, which I call panel name, uh, obviously. And just as we described in that uh, list of Python dictionaries, there's a title, example title. And for each of our settings, there's a new setting we can toggle. We can click to toggle this Boolean setting. If we click the numeric setting, we can choose a number by typing it in. And if obviously it was on mobile, it would pop up the keyboard and so on, it's all handled. Uh, there's an option setting with the three options that we added in the dictionary. Again, that's why you would want to change that. Change that to options three, I suppose. A string setting, again, that can be any string, set in an obvious sort of way, or a path setting, and this pops up an actual file browser so that the user can navigate through the file system to find the path they want. In this case, I set the default to some path so it doesn't know how to navigate to that since it doesn't exist on my system, so I won't show how to actually change that. Okay, great. I can even show you, I think, what that actually looks like. It stores in the settings.ini, and you can see the syntax of the file is simple. The example is the example section, just as we set, and each of the settings has a simple string representing it, which knows how to read it. You can see it's even updated it to the changed values that I added a moment ago. That's almost everything we need for our own settings panel, but actually the vital thing missing is currently changing these settings doesn't change anything in our application. What we really want to do is when the user changes the setting, have something called in our app so we can run some Python code to modify the program in response to that. That's easy too. We simply do on config change self, some config, some section, some key, and some value. And this method is automatically called whenever a user changes a configuration. It will pass through the config parser, the section of the config, obviously, and the key and the new value that the configuration has. You could do whatever you want. I'll just print them, I guess. Config section key value. So if you run this code, when you click through the config settings and change them as I did a moment ago, you would see it print them out as and when you clicked OK in all those dialogues. Uh, I won't show more of an example than that. But the basic idea is now you could write literally any Python code here to change anything in your application in response to the user changing these settings. We need to make one more change as well. When the program is actually started, we have to read in things. And again, we can use self.config, which you all, as before, is where this default built config is stored. Um, and you can treat it as a normal config parser. You can check the documentation for full details. But for instance, self.config.items in the example section would be a list of key and value pairs for all the settings that have been stored in the file. Or you can use self.config.get, some section, I guess, example, and some key, I guess, root example, will be an example. And if you assign that to something, um, setting equals, then of course you could do anything you want with that using the value of the setting that has been stored in the file. So now not only can we change the settings, we can save them in the file and automatically load it when the app is start and actually do things in response to what those settings have been set to. 
I guess I can show you one thing more as well. We can do self dot use kiwi settings is false. Oops. And now that get rid gets rid of the default kiwi settings panel. You'll probably often want to do that in your own application since you don't want the user to be exposed to all of those somewhat internal settings. Now we only have our own panel, but again, that's just as it was before. Everything is fine. So that's the basic idea. I just went through things quite quickly, but you can see, although there's a few different steps you have to take, none of it is very involved. As long as you follow these simple steps to do everything, you set the defaults of the config, you load some settings information, which I did from um, this file. You can get this from anywhere, as long as it's formatted as a JSON string. You pass that in to add to a JSON panel of your settings, and Kiwi itself takes care of everything else. The advantage is, although you have to write this list of dictionaries, you're not making the widgets on your own, which is a lot more fiddly. I mean, you could do it that way and add everything to the panel and keep it in the right order. But it's ultimately more involved than simply writing down what each widget should be like, how to represent each setting, and linking it this way. That's everything, I guess, for now. You can download this and try it yourself if you want to see what changing any of these uh, options does. I'm not sure what I do in the next video. Actually, there will probably will be a couple of weeks where I don't make any videos since I'm going to be unavailable. But I will, I'm not stopping doing them. I'll cover, come back to them as soon as I can. When I do get back to it, I might like to cover some more Android things. Or even building for different operating systems. People have asked for instructions on how to build for Windows, for instance. Which isn't very hard. Now I'll see if I can show about how I'm doing that. How, show, doing, um, show how to do that. For now, though, thanks for watching.